there, everybody. This is Melissa from stampwithmelissa.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today, I'm gonna share with you how to make this super, super fun card using the Bloom Where You're Planted um, designer series paper, stamp set, uh, and dies, and then also these cool Give It A Whirl dies. Now, this is such a fun die set, the Give It A Whirl, and they can be used for so many different things, and I thought it would be kind of fun to make a choose your own plant card, um, which is what I have for you here today. So super, super fun um, card that I want to share. So the Bloom Where You're Planted suite can be found on pages 80 and 81 of the brand new annual catalog. It is a beautiful set. I absolutely love it. And it has some fun macrame, um, a hanging plant holder, and some various things. It's a beautiful set it truly is and there's that macrame embossing folder in there that's a super fun one too um and then let me see if i can find it here i should be able to we've also got the give it a world eyes in use and they can be found on page 57 with the cute stellar birthday um that's where they kind of sneak peek in the give it a whirl and they sneak it in with the stellar birthday but you can use it for so many things so today i wanted to share with you how to make this super super fun card um, and so before I get started, let me just say if you don't already have an annual catalog and you're not working with a demonstrator, I would love to send you a catalog. Just drop me an email. My email is down in the description box below. Um, and all of the measurements and products uh, that I use on today's card will be found in my coordinating blog post and the link to that is also down in that description box. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to scooch the card off to the side so that you can see it to kind of track our progress. And I'm gonna pull in here my supplies so that you can see them. All right, so we are using the brand new Evening Evergreen in color for the card base. I love this, isn't this just like a stunning green? It's so pretty. Um, and then we've got, again, that beautiful um, Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper. This is the leaf side, and then there's like kind of a cool stone brick kind of look on that side. And then I've also got a piece of basic white. This is gonna be for the inside of the card, and we're also gonna use a scrap piece of basic white to cut out the wheel and the um, pot there. So what I'm gonna do first is bring in my Give It A World eyes. Now I put mine on this um, magnetic sheet, and then I've also got these two pieces that I've already pulled off, and we're going to start with this piece here. All right, so move those back to the side. And what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to line it up closer to the bottom here, and that's because this designer series paper is cut at four inches by six inches. That's just how it came, um, so or how I had it cut already. And so um, I wanted to line it up at the bottom because I want to use that extra scrap piece for the inside of my card. So I'm using a post-it note here just to hold that die in place, but I'll show you the inside of the card quick. So this is where I use the designer series paper. Super, super cute. Uh, so now that this is all loaded up like this, I'm gonna go ahead and run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine and I'll be right back. All right, so we've got that cut out. Again, like I said, I am gonna use that top part there. So I'll just set it to the side for right now. Um, and then I'll remove this post-it note here and you can see that we've got this fun piece. Now this is the notch where that wheel will go so you can spin it and then it also cut out this hole right here um, and that's so that we can attach it with a brad so everything sticks together all right now i've got this scrap piece of basic white here and i'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on here we're going to just line it up like this um, and while it's sitting there i am going to bring in the pot and for the pot i'm using cajun craze ink um, there are a few different pot sizes in this set, but this is my favorite one. So this is the one I'm going to use. So I'll ink that up in the Cajun Craze. And then we'll go ahead and stamp it down. And this way I can die cut both the wheel and the pot at the same time. All right, so now that that's stamped, I can go ahead and close that. And then I've got the cute little die cut. And again, this comes from the stamp set, which I'll show you. So here's the stamp set. A beautiful, beautiful set. Lots of great sentiments, the plant itself, and then the pots. Um, and when you open it up, you can see I've got my dies on a magnetic sheet and all the stamps here. And it is photopolymer, which is awesome because you can see through it. All right, so then we'll get this pot lined up here. Like so. And then I'm going to use my post-it to hold both in place. This just makes it so they don't move around on the paper while I die cut. Now I'm going to go die cut these and I'll be right back. All right, so there's those pieces. We will take that post-it note off. 
There we go. And then we've got the adorable little pot there. And I'll put that die cut away before I lose it. Um, and then we've got the wheel here. So super, super awesome set. I just love it. I think it's so cute. All right, so we're not quite finished with our die cutting. So we have to cut out the window here and that's going to be what you can see as the wheel turns. So this piece right here. All right, so we are using this wedge piece and what you do is you wanna line up this circle with the one in the um, main piece, okay? So I'm gonna kind of put my finger on there and make sure it looks like I actually got that pretty straight. So I will bring my post-it note back in here to hold it in place and I'll die cut this and then we will be all done with our die cutting. All right, so there's that piece and then we've got our post-it note and our extra little wedge piece that we'll put to the side. And now we can start stamping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up and I, I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but you can see the little lines there that came in from the die cut. And that helps me to make sure that I am in a good spot when I stamp, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start with this one. And I'm sorry, I do not know the names of all these plants, but this one that looks like sticks and I'm using gray granite. I have no idea if that's the actual color of these things. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> um, but if you know, you can let me know in the comments. But so I've got gray granite there and I'm gonna go ahead and line it up down kind of close to that, um, the circle or the, the, yeah, the little circle that was die cut, but not past this line here. And the reason for that is because when I put the pot there, I want it to look like it's coming out of it. All right. So we don't need the gray granite anymore. I'll go ahead and close him up. Then we'll pivot this guy so that it's lined up with this one. And now we've got garden green with this three leaf plant here like that. All right, so we'll ink it up. And this guy is a little bit long, so he's gonna kind of poke off the edge, but that's okay. I don't think the recipient of this card will mind. Um, so here's what I mean is that it kind of comes past that line right there, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, all right. So we'll, we'll, we will set that to the side. And then this last plant we're going to do is kind of unique because he's got five leaves on him, but it's a bit too much to fit in this window. So I'm actually using my evening evergreen stamp and write marker. This is the water-based marker, and I'm going to color in these three middle leaves and that's what we're going to stamp down so i'm going to go ahead and open up the brush tip here and just kind of make my um, marker level with that stamp and i'm going to be careful here as i do the stem because it kind of shares the stem with one of the leaves we're not coloring in and same with this one right here but we're going to kind of color those in and this is a fun way to um, start if you don't have all of the inks of stampin up and you want them all this is a really cost-effective way to kind of get them, is to buy the stamp and write markers and then you can just color right on the stamps. Now these are different from our blends markers. Our blends markers are alcohol-based, so do not color on the stamp with them. Um, but those ones are meant for like coloring in images. So there we go, we're stamping that down. And you can see it kind of gives it like a really cool watercolor effect, which I think looks really neat for this card. All right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna line him up. All right, we'll line up those two circles there. And I'm going to bring in my round and square brads. These are new and can be found in the annual catalog. And I'm just gonna grab any of them out. So I, whoops, I actually grabbed two. So I grabbed out one of the black squares, but it doesn't really matter because it's gonna get hidden. And we're gonna feed it through the front circle like that. And then we will feed it through the wheel. All right, just like that. We'll go ahead and close that here, like so. All right, and that will be what allows it to spin. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our card base, we'll go ahead and fold it. I'm gonna use my bone folder to crease. I did score it at four and a quarter inches, which is halfway um, on the long side. So, use my bone folder to score it. Now I'm gonna bring in my foam adhesive strips. And if you watched my live video a few weeks ago um, with the Party Puffins card, you'll know I mentioned in there that I like to use the adhesive strips for this because I find that the extra dimension, they're a little bit thicker than dimensionals, 
um, I find that that really allows the wheel to turn quite a bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and use these on our card. And I'm going to use a total of two strips here. Um, and what you wanna make sure that you do not do is cover any part of that wheel because you want him to be able to, to spin still. So I will do that and I'll speed that up. Here we go. All right, now that all that backing's off there, again, I'll just remind you that I did not cover that wheel anywhere because I want him to still be able to turn, okay? So then I'll bring in my card base. We'll make sure we're opening in the right direction and we're gonna go ahead and center this on the card base. Like so. Super, super cute, isn't it? Okay, so next up, what we're gonna do is we need to put our pot on there. And our pot is going to, I'm actually gonna spin it to that stick one again because it has a more of a blunt bottom. Um, and so the pot's gonna kind of cover up the bottom part of that wedge there. And again, it's gonna cover up the brad. Now you may have noticed that brad actually spins with the wheel. Um, so I don't, wanna, I don't wanna put any adhesive there to hinder that from moving. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I have these, this little, I think this is from a paper pumpkin. Um, and these are mini black dimensionals. And uh, I'm just gonna cut up to use some of these edges here. And I'm gonna put them on the top of the pot here. And then I'm also going to line it on the bottom like this. So I'm leaving most of that middle part open so that it doesn't interfere with anything. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. And I'm not covering too much of that wedge because I don't want those dimensionals to stick down um, where they cover that, but isn't that so cute? Such a fun card. I like the whole choose your own plant aspect of that. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Chalk marker. This is our white Stampin' Chalk marker, and I'm just gonna draw in a cute little arrow here. Now, if you don't want to draw in an arrow, there are arrows in the Give It A Whirl die set that you could use as well. All right, so now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and do our sentiment. So I have this scrap piece of Evening Evergreen here, and I am going to pull out my embossing buddy and just remove some of the static. Unfortunately, Stampin' Up! no longer sells the embossing buddy, but if you still have yours, it's still a great tool to use. Then I've got my Versamark ink pad here, and I'm going to uncap that. And I've got the sentiment here that says, to a dear friend. And we're gonna go ahead and ink that in the Versamark, and then I'm going to stamp it on the right-hand side, like so. We'll go ahead and cap this, move it over to the side. And I've got my white embossing powder. And we will put that on the sentiment. I love using white embossing powder on a dark colored cardstock. It just really makes that sentiment pop. It looks so good. All right, I'm gonna heat this up and I'll be right back. All right, now that that's all done here, I'm gonna go ahead and just snip off the other side and I'm gonna make it as straight as possible. That was pretty good there. And then we will use some dimensionals. I gotta find them, here they are. We'll use some dimensionals to pop that up. So on the whole front of this card, everything has been popped up so far, which is kind of fun. Um, and then we're just gonna line that up in the lower right-hand corner, like so. All right, now we just need to decorate the inside. So again, I've got this basic white piece here, and then I've got this scrap um, from when I cut out the front card part. All right, so I'm lining it up at the half inch mark here, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. All right, then for the inside sentiment here, I've got this cute one that says, a little note with the biggest thanks. And this is my Just Jade ink pad here. So I'll ink that up, and I'm gonna stamp it down before I do any of the um, adhering of the DSP scrap because if I messed that up, I would be able to turn it over, um, but not if I had already put that DSP on there. So good thing I didn't clear off. I have some embossing powder there. And then I'm actually gonna use this other side, the stony bricky kind of side. So I've got my seal adhesive in here. We'll go ahead and run some adhesive on the back. 
and line this up at the bottom here. Super, super cute. I love how this card turned out. All right, like that. So we will add some seal to the back and pop it on the inside of the card. There we go, isn't that so cute? Here, I'll open this one up for you and we'll, uh, we'll see what they look like next to each other. All right, so thank you so much for watching today. Here's the inside and the outside of the this fun, fun card. Um, I really appreciate you watching. And so if you would give this video a big thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you're new around here, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and make sure that notification bell is on so you'll be notified anytime I post a new video or go live. Um, so again, yeah, thank you so much for watching. The blog post with photos and measurements and products used can be found down in the description box below and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.